Hello, welcome back to my channel once again. And my name is Kwakudapa. So in this episode of, I mean, uh, our course, we're going to look at pivot table. So pivot table is a tool in Excel that is used to summarize data. And when you use pivot table, I mean, it saves you from using a lot of manual, I mean, calculation in Excel. So looking at the data set that we have, this is a superstore's data. And assuming that our manager works to us and want to know the sales in each region. So let's look at the region column. They want to know the total sales in each region column. Then you have to use what? The sum if function, which makes it very tedious. But with pivot table, you can easily get the data for your boss within a split of a second. So why pivot table is that? Pivot table is very fast in terms of reporting and also it helps to you know group data and summarize data easily and it saves a lot of time doing manual calculations or manual analysis on data okay so after knowing what pivot table is we can safely create our first pivot table so to create a pivot table you just need to click on the first row of the data set then you go to insert so under insert you see pivot table you just click on it then this small box will open so the first one select a table range or a table or range so by default excel will select all the records for you and the next option is a new worksheet or existing worksheet so new worksheet means the pivot table will be created on a new worksheet so we will stick to that we will create it on a new worksheet so you don't really need to do much here you just click on ok then a new worksheet is added for you so i'll change the name to pivot table that's the sheet name so now we have orders and pivot table so orders is our data set and pivot table is where we're going to build our i mean summary reporting or analysis we are going to do our analysis on the data set okay so uh, in the pivot table sheet we have the pivot uh, area where you build your report when you click outside this pivot report area i mean it moves from uh, the the pivot effect so if you want to build your report you need to click in this area okay so on the right hand side there is a pivot table field so under the pivot table fields we have the fields or the columns area which lists all the columns in our data set so you can search for columns using this search box then below the pivot table fields we have these four boxes so these four boxes will help us to create our pivot summary or pivot table so filter will help us to filter records so assuming i want to filter the records by segments i can just drag segments here and it creates a filter for me so when i click on the drop down icon i see uh, the various segments so if i want to filter by consumer i can just click on consumer and the records will be filtered by consumers so let me yes so basically that is how the filters work okay then we have the columns area so the columns area will create or will arrange data in a column manner so assuming i drag segments i drag segment into the column area this is what we get so 
the segment is arranged in a column four okay so in the row area that is where uh, that will also arrange the segments in a column in a row four so basically that's the difference between the column and the rows area then lastly we have the values area so this is where all the calculations or i mean analysis on the data set is done so assuming i drag sales to this uh, box under values excel will, pivot table will calculate the total or the sum of all the sales so if i want to change i mean the the aggregation i can right click on the data here and choose what summarize by either count average maximum minimum product then more will give you more aggregation options to choose so assuming i want to find the total average sales i can just choose average sales here and the data or the values will be converted to average sales or i can just click on this small arrow here and choose value field settings then inside here too we have different aggregations that you can choose so i can choose max then okay this gives us what the maximum sales in in a sales amount so basically this is where you or how you can build your pivot reports okay so i think we can build a nice pivot report so assuming we want to find a sales per region so what i'll do is i'll drag region to the rows column and i'll drag sales to the values column so this gives us the total sales in each region so in the central region this is our sales east south and west these are the individual sales that occurred in these regions okay so by default when you drag a number or i mean an integer into the values box it it performs a sum aggregation on the data but assuming you drag a text to the or a field that contains text or a column that contains text into the values box it performs a count so this counts the various categories in each central in each region so basically that is how uh, pivot tables work when you drag a field that has uh, text and the values it performs a count operation on, on it so this gives a count of regions in each i mean uh, category okay so let me drag regions down here again so you see uh, when you look at furniture in central region this is the count of I mean regions or oh, we can do it this way let me drag this here we already have it so I'll drag category here so in central region this is uh, the total categories or the count of categories that we have all right so assuming I drag uh, order ID here this gives us a count of orders the total orders made so if i drag segment here then i get the total count of orders per each segment so basically that's the difference between uh, numbers and texts when it is dragged into the value field so i will build my report once again 
So assuming you want to note sales in each state, I can just drag states here, then drag sales into the values box. And this gives us sales in each state. So I'll drag back. I want to know the sales per categories. So this gives us the total sales per each category. Okay. So this is just a brief about, I mean, creating pivot tables and reports. Okay. So the next thing that I want to talk about is slices and timelines. So slices are like uh, filtering or yeah, filtering records in a data set. So assuming when we want to filter uh, uh, per region, in this data set we click on this drop down to get this drop down you go to sort and filter and you choose filter so this adds this drop down here so you can drop down and choose or filter by only central so this gives you only records on central okay so in pivot table we have uh, slices so under analysis you will see slices here slices and timelines so basically the difference between the two is that slices is used to filter uh, i mean non date valued records whilst timeline is used to filter date uh, date records so assuming i have a sales per let me use country okay the country is all us so i want to use sales per segment okay so this is what we have as sales per segment and we want to create a filter or a slicer that will filter based on categories so there are several ways that we can do this so i'll i'll just right click on categories and i choose add slicer so this adds a slicer to the pivot table so with this i can filter uh, the records using or clicking on any of these so if i want to I mean filter by furniture I'll just click on furniture and this gives us only furniture sales per each segment so if I click on office supplies this gives only sales of office supplies per each segment then technology will also do same okay so if I want to get the full amount I just click on clear filter so basically this is how you can use slices to you know uh, to create filters in pivot table then you can also connect uh, filters to two or more tables so i'll create another pivot table and all that i need to do is i'll just select this make a copy of it and paste it in an in any empty cell so I don't need to go back to the data and create a new pivot table. I can just make a copy. So now we have two pivot tables. So if I click on this and go to analyze, I'll see pivot table two. So I can name it as what? Uh, sales, sales per segment. Okay then this will be sales per region so i'll click on this pivot table and i'll change from segments to region so now we have uh, sales per segment and sales per region so i rename this to sales per region so this is how you can name pivot tables so we have sales per region then sales per segment okay so now i want to connect these two tables so that when i filter 
directors it will affect both tables currently it's affecting the second table because i did copy and paste so let me disconnect this second table from the slicer and go through the process again so i'll click on the second table then right click on the slicer and go to uh, report connection so now i can just uncheck this and click on ok so now this table is disconnected from the slicer so when i click on the slicer it doesn't filter the region pivot table it only filters the segment table so if i want to connect back the region table to the slicer all that i need to do is i'll right click again and go to report connection and i just check uh, this box on the sales per region uh, row so now when i click on any of the uh, categories it filters based on what is clicked so now the segment and region is filtered by technology so under consumers this is how much sales in terms of technology and in central region too this is how much sales eastern south and west per technology furnitures this so you see with pivot table you can easily do analysis on your data set or you can also come to options then report connection so we can connect and disconnect reports by using this as well so as i said there are two ways of i mean adding filters to or slices to uh, or connecting pivot tables to slices okay so the next thing that i want to do is uh, i'm going to talk about how we can use uh, time timelines so i will right click on i'll select all this and make a copy come here and paste so once it's copied it's connected to the to this pivot uh, this slicer so i'll just right click on it then go to report connection and disconnect it so now when i filter it doesn't apply to this table then in this table the fields that i want are the other dates so i'll get rid of region so by default when you i mean you create report on dates and the date field is in the right date format pivot table groups them into years quarters and other date so when you click on the plus sign you see that pivot table has grouped them into i mean quarters then if you click on the quarters you see month so if you don't want or you want only for the years you can just remove quarters and other date so this gives only year so now i want to use slices uh, timelines so i'll just click in any of the i mean values go to analyze and choose slices so uh, it's asking whether i will filter by order date or ship date but i'll choose order date because that's what we want then i'll just click on ok so with this it creates slices it creates a, a timeline to also filter records based on date so by default it's on month so if i filter by december this gives us only sales in december then november september august uh, june 
Then we have 2014 January, 2014 February, 2014 March, April, May. We have 2015 in that order. But I can also change this to years. So now we have filters for only the years. So using this timeline, I can filter by only the years. I can choose by quarters, which will also allow me to filter by quarters for each year. I can choose this, which will also, I mean, let me filter by uh, each day in the year where sales occurred. So when I'm done, I can just click on this to get everything back. Okay, so this is how you can also use timelines. Now let's talk about how we can design timelines or slices. So you see, when you click on timelines, you see the timeline styles. So these are various styles that you can choose for your timeline, or you can create a customized design. If I want to create a customized design, I'll just right click on one of them and choose duplicate. Then I start modifying these fields. So assuming maybe I want to modify this, I'll just choose format. Then I, ch I choose any color that I want. So I'll choose move. And then OK. OK then okay so you see it has created a, a custom move design for me so this is the custom design if i want to apply it to this i just select it and it applies to this it seems it's let me modify and change the color again so header color the whole color i'll choose another color let me go by this okay then header color to i will choose a fill of let's say move okay then okay so now you see that our custom has applied to the slicer and we can to the timeline we can do same for slices if you click on it go to options then styles I can right click on this, duplicate, then start modifying. So now this is the custom, right click, modify, slicer, okay. No, I think I need to format rather. So I select this, format, then I choose any color then okay okay so you see that now if i click on this it will apply to the filter so basically this is how filters and slices work in i mean pivot tables okay so now i want to talk about uh, data source when data changes in pivot tables so assuming uh, we have a modification of our data. So now this is what we have as the total. So assuming uh, the amount for the first row changes. So now this is the amount 261.96. So so assuming it changes to 500,000 or 5,000 and let's check the current so this is the current total sales but once the data changes we have two ways to apply it to the pivot table we can right click on the data and choose refresh so you see that the data has refreshed to reflect the amount that was changed here. Or you can go to analyze, then refresh. Okay. But in an instance whereby uh, 
rows are added rows are added so here we added we just modified the existing i mean records so assuming rows are rather added so let's say uh, this row let me drag this here so we've added additional rows or to our data set up to 10,004 and it's we've added let's see okay so we've added additional rows to our data sets let me drag this here to make it 10,005 right so now we have an addition of I mean additional rows to our data set but when you come here it's not reflected in the total when you right click and refresh it will not work when you go to analyze and refresh it will not work so how you can I mean refresh the data or make the data i mean show in P uh, power in pivot table is that you use this tool so change data source you just click on it and choose change data source so now this dialog box opens as if you are creating a new pivot table then you just extend it to so it was 10,005. You just extend it to the last row. So when we added uh, the new rows, it ended at 10,005. Then you just press on OK. So now you see the data has been modified. So to verify that, we can just click on the first one, Shift Control down. So now the amount is uh, 2,299,875. So 2,299,000. We have that here. Okay. So this is how when you add new rules, you can, you know, apply it to the pivot table. So assuming you work on monthly records and the first month, you create your pivot table with the first month's data and the second month's data comes in and is added or to the previous month's data all that you need to do is you come to analyze then you choose what change data source then you select up to the row the the current month ends then it's it's just you know refreshes your pivot table and apply the new amount so i'll go back here and get rid of what we added or we can keep it but since it's a repetitive data we can just get rid of it okay so i think it started from somewhere here shift control down arrow then i'll delete everything control c so i'll come back here and try to refresh the data okay so it's showing blank what i need to do is i have to come here change data source then the last i think the last row is the last row is nine 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 four so i have to change this to nine 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 four so whether you add or you update the records this is how you need to you know refresh to make it apply to the pivot table okay so the next thing that i want to talk about is the pivot layout so basically uh, this is the current design or layout so you can come to designs 
then pivot table style so you can choose different styles from here depending on what color you want so if i select this it applies to it if you select this so depending on the style that you want your pivot table to be you can just choose from here or you can even create your new pivot style so this will allow you to customize a style for your pivot table but we will just i mean choose the default designs then also you see these tools here so assuming we have consumers then we also add uh, let me add categories so i'll search it and add under segment so this creates uh, categories for each segment so now i want to you know so under the layout you can show or do not show subtotals so this will get rid of all subtotals you can show all subtotals at the bottom and the totals will be at the bottom you can show at the top and this is how it will look you can even get rid of i mean grand totals so off for rows and columns it will get rid of the grand totals you can show on rows and columns you can show for only rows and for only columns then we have the we have report layout so here show in compact mode so it's currently in compact mode you can show in outline mode you can show in tabular mode you can show in i mean do not repeat item labels you can repeat all item labels so under here but i think do not repeat will looks much better then also compact so depending on how you want to set your report then blank rules you can insert blank line after each item so this creates a nice report outlook depending on what you want or how you want your report to look like so basically this is how you can uh, work on pivot tables right so basically you can use the layout tools to you know design your pivot tables nicely if you want banded rows if you want banded columns you can do that so under design you can i mean design your pivot table to look nice okay so we will just stick to any of the colors all right so the next thing that i want us to talk about is calculated fields so i'll create another pivot report so this time around i will pull uh, sales for for products wow it's a lot then i will pull profit as well so now we have we have some of sales and profit so we want to calculate the cost so in our data set we don't have the cost of each product so since we have profit that was made on each product we can calculate the cost and there are two ways that we can do calculations in pivot table either we do it manually by doing it like this so equal to so sum of sales is b4 so b4 minus c4 this will give us the price or the cost of each uh, product so i'll just i mean drag it down 
to apply to the rest of the data but one disadvantage of doing it manually is that when i i mean i remove or i add to this uh, we're going to lose the calculation or assuming i remove this you see okay we still have it but it doesn't add to here okay no so assuming that maybe i copy this to a new cell and i delete this you see how it's i mean it's misbehaving yeah so the best way to do this is to use what calculated fields and in excel or in pivot table we have calculated fields that we can use to do calculations so we will do that and calculated fields will add the calculation on the pivot table you see this was outside the pivot table so i just click on any of the values go to analyze then here field items and sets i choose calculated fields so the first field is the name so the name will be cost and the second field is where you perform the calculations so i will choose sales then minus profit okay then i click on okay so this creates a column to calculate cost in the pivot table so when we check the fields here you see that cost is added so you can use it anytime so even if i remove the name here we still have it i can drag let's say region here we will have it so this is the cost per each i mean region we can push this there then the data will be grouped into states in each region and we have our cost okay so you see calculated fields is much better when you want to uh, do calculations in pivot table so you can do all sort of calculations in pivot table as long as you have the records there okay so the next thing that i'll talk about is grouping records in pivot table so i'll do i mean let me bring the sales dates once again other dates so we have let me go to design layout i'll just remove the blanks okay then i think i'll choose this one i don't want no okay this is fine doesn't matter so now what i want to do is i want to group uh, per sales so i'll have months no i want to group by date so to do that you, i will have the order dates and the sum of sales so i'll just right click on this then choose group or i'll come up here and choose group okay so right click group so now excel pivot table gives us the range of you know sales so from starting from first march 2014 to you know 3rd january 2014 to 31st december 2027 2017 sorry this is all the sales uh, per month 
but I want to group them in let's say we want to find the weekly deal, uh, weekly sales so I'll select days and on on select month quarter and year then I'll just provide seven here so number of days is seven so between uh, 2014 and 2017 I want to analyze or check for the weekly sales so by this I just click on OK and pivot table will group the dates into weeks for me so this in 2014 first week this is the sales uh, second week this is the sales so you see how you can use pivot table to do I mean analysis on your data without stress so assuming if we were to do this manually on the raw data we will just I mean will not be able to do that so now that we have this if assuming we want to plot a chart for or to to see the distribution of I mean sales per week we can do that so this will take us to pivot charts so pivot table also has a tool called pivot charts which you can use to create charts so you just click on any of the fields then you go to pivot chart then you choose the kind of chart that you want so if i choose this and i press on ok this gives a distribution of what the weekly sales from january 2014 to 2017 so when you look at this you see that uh, there is a uniform a bit of uniform trend in terms of sales per week so this is how you can use grouping to group data in uh, excel in pivot table so assuming you have age you have a data set that has age and you want to group the age based on a certain or based on a range you can do that okay so now assuming that we want to group the sales into uh, bands let's say we want to so let me drag sales here so we have sales and we want to group them into let's say uh, so the first field will give us the minimum sales then the last field will give us the highest sales so we want to group them in thousands or you can change it to anyhow that you want either five thousands thousands or all right so we are grouping by thousands so that will give us a range of thousand so this is what we get so in the first thousand this is the sales first two thousand and so on and so forth let me try grouping them in 5,000 and let's see okay then what I'll do is I'll just push uh, other ID here we want to see the count of sales in so we can let me go back to thousand okay so this analysis will give us the count of sales within each band let me let me do this so here let me make a zero i can start from any starting point okay so okay, all right i think this is fine so uh, the highest sales was recorded in the first thousand so most of the sales amounts or most of the sales was between first zero to thousand followed by i mean thousand to two thousand so the least sales occurred i think only one sale occurred in between twenty two thousand and twenty three thousand so at least with this we can know the count of sales uh, when grouped 
in a range of thousand so we can just plot a chart for that and this can let us know i mean how our data or how the sales performed so you see the first thousand recorded the highest uh, sales count okay so grouping is that i mean is also a powerful tool in pivot table that can help you to i mean do a histogram analysis on your data set at least this gives us a distribution of how our sales count performs so let's see if we can plot we don't have it here so what we can do is maybe we can copy the data outside so this is range and this is count then let me see if i can use the normal built-in excel chart to create histogram all charts histogram okay so you see this gives us what a histogram of our sales or we can even use bar charts so insert we can use any of these wow any of these the distribution is very wide it's very very wide okay so basically this is how we can group our data in pivot table so this brings us to the end of all that we need to know uh, in pivot table to perform analysis on our data so if you enjoy this video please subscribe to the channel so that you always be motivated to bring in more videos thank you for watching once again and the name still remains kwakudapa bye